know the captain's weight, I suppose I've had a bit of a um, We are a, a commercially focused law firm. Um, we represent many of the, the local authorities uh, in the region, and many of the um, larger commercial organisations as well. Uh, we're a specialist law firm, uh, specialising in environmental law, uh, commercial, employment, uh, litigation and, uh, and property. Uh, I'm relatively new to, um, to law and to his way. Um, and what I found is that there's one thing that I think sets us apart from, from other law firms in the region is that the, the firm has a, a vision, uh, and that's the, the vision is to be the first uh, nationally recognised law firm um, in the region. And um, we're well on our way to, to, to being there. Since I've been here for three and a half years, um, we've a lot of people in the inside. Um, we've now got 40 lawyers. Um, and I think um, we've only got 14 partners as well. So during this, uh, we can't find that. That's quite an impressive feat to achieve. Um, well, another reason that, uh, that I think it's impressive is, is, is the vision. It's probably one of the reasons why we're here today. Um, we'll talk about um, you know, how law uh, is adopting uh, project management in New Zealand. Myself, um, I was originally a mechanical engineer, um, not for, for too long though, I'd like to say. Um, I soon realised that um, being an engineer wasn't, wasn't myself, I was particularly doing to, to managing projects. Um, I've managed a um, multitude of, of different projects over the last few years. Um, power generation projects in the, in the living in the Far East. Um, in the UK, I, I managed a number of infrastructure projects, rail, telecommunications. Um, and in New Zealand, construction uh, projects, obviously. Project manager at uh, Wintex Campus Development, uh, for Catherine there. Uh, unfortunately, my name is still pointed around, which might be a good thing, but might not be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a five year project, which is probably 10 years ago now. Um, and also a number of um, product development projects for agricultural things in New Zealand as well. So I've managed quite a diverse range of projects. Um, and um, now as a lawyer, I specialise in environmental law. Um, I found that that technical background is, is an assistance to me when I'm communicating with um, our, our experts. We do rely on a lot of technical experts. Um, so being able to engage with technical experts on, on technical aspects is a, is a real advantage for me. Um, but it also helps that many of our Clients are of that size that they manage things by projects. Um, we can then talk about projects in a project management language. So uh, it's been a, a real assistance to me. I, I had an article published in the New Zealand Lawyer, probably a couple of months ago, which was very lengthy on the introduction to this. Um, and in there, I, I made a statement of um, when I first started to practice law. Um, I thought that the majority of the, the project management skills and the skills that, that, I, did, that, that I had would, uh, would become redundant. And that I would, instead of being a, a, a manager of many aspects of, of many things, I'd become a, a subject matter expert again. And that would be required to focus on the technical detail of, of the legal issues. And I wouldn't need to worry about managing client expectations and scope and time and cost and all of these wonderful things. Um, and, uh, and as soon as I started to practice, I, I realised that there was much about practicing law that was so far on the project management. Um, one example was uh, probably two weeks, I think, after I first grew in that, I went to a, uh, a meeting with a number of technical experts in preparation for a hearing that was going to be taking place. Um, and the person in the meeting was really to, to talk out issues to define what was the required. It really to scope out the evidence that was uh, required, time frames, uh, who's responsible for what, uh, and the communication between them, and all those sorts of things. And um, despite the fact that I didn't really have a good grasp of the legal issues, I thought it facilitated that process quite well. I was in a position 
management is the way of delivering the second option, which is more profitable to the third uh, rather than the first option. Um, when, I, when I first started to, to look around and, and see what was happening overseas, when I was even over time, to see what, uh, what you know, we could use in the house here, there was only a couple of uh, people who were actually talking as a few legal commentators, what they didn't know what I do. Posting different things about legal public punishment. A couple of law firms who were saying this is it, this is how we operate. Um, but apart from that, there wasn't a great deal of activity. There was nothing in New Zealand. Um, there, there was no law firms that were saying we're we not going to have expectations for a, a process that would deliver a guaranteed outcome. Um, but now it's just it's taken up, it's gone, it's gone viral. There is overseas in Canada. Um, there are full time project managers, law firms engage full time project managers to manage legal projects. That allows them to give the lawyers focus on the technical subject matters um, and allowing the, the, the project manager to manage the, the whole process. And there's a lot around, a lot of legal business around the process. Um, and they're finding that they can get efficiencies in engagement to the team as a, as a legal project manager. Um, he wasn't being charged up at the same hour rate as a senior partner, but he was doing a lot of that process work. Um, there are quite a few PMPs uh, that are going to talk with the law firms and the law firms overseas. Um, and a number have uh, developed project management offices as well. So they've really adopted legal project management. Um, of course, there's a, a number of um, textbooks now. There's quite a few authors out there who are telling people how to actually manage you know, legal projects, and I've read quite a number of those textbooks. Um, and uh, there's nothing really new about them, it's a bit of a bottle or a project plan to provide. Um, there's a whole group of consultants that are providing various training courses um, and um, different project management systems. And there's been a, a, an increase in the development of project, legal project management specific software so that you can, you can manage your, your legal projects um, with an integrated project management system together with your um, time recording system, which is what we typically use in the, in the law firm. We use a lot of our processes around time recording and an integrated system along those lines. So, as a, as a project manager, of course, a lawyer who is a I'm also a project manager, I find this time is particularly interesting, um, and there's quite a lot of, uh, of things happening um, overseas, not so much in, uh, in New Zealand. So, many of those, um, many of those firms that have taken on board legal project management, <coughs> providing the training, they recognise that. Um, Legal project management really comes into its own when controlling costs. And they can't control costs. Uh, it's when you've got a fixed fee, if you've got a fixed fee uh, basis where we've gone to the client and we'll deliver a piece of work right at the beginning to get a fixed fee. You can't be doing it without legal project management. Um, but also, they're, they're also recognizing that there are many more benefits to project management than just cost control and cost efficiency. Cost certainty, and that there are better outcomes to be achieved for both the client and for for the return as well. Uh, some of those are uh, there would be the increased predictability of the of the costs, um, undertaking the more detailed planning up front, um, developing a, a knowledge base of um, data, such as the lessons learned processes, feeding that back into the, the planning process. Um, provides the firm with this um, more accurate way to get to what the cost are likely to be, but they're no longer walking into this kind of um, this void of, of, of vacuum of what system is going to be like to present and do as you need in a, in a law firm. That would be the issue that you have with no cost before, and um, you can make a different price for, for doing that. So, collecting all this knowledge and feeding it back into the process, um, they can find that their costs are being more, more uh, accurate. In their estimates. Um, increased profitability, uh, reducing the write offs. So, um, typically, typically, what would happen is um, when we come to do a, a billing report for a client, is 
uh, you look at the work that's been undertaken, um, and if there's any inefficiencies in that process, then you can write that time off to the point that you've paid for the time that you've spent um, investigating issues which weren't really relevant for so as well. <coughs> somewhere you don't try to find that that is a little bit written off. Um, focusing only on doing the work that's, that's necessary uh, to deliver the product requirements, um, resourcing at the, at the lowest level, the person who is able to deliver that piece of work, rather than a, a partner trying to do everything at a, a, a higher rate, you can start to look through and find out who's the, who's the lowest level of work that can constantly deliver that piece. Um, exercising change control. Um, which, in my experience, has been probably the most difficult thing around any project that I've managed is not just managing change control, but quite often recognizing when a, when a change is occurred and, and being able to respond to it at the time. Um, and that's especially so for, for legal matters. And um, I think there's the real benefits there for a good change control process. Um, and again, you, you don't want to take the work that's necessary and that the clients don't pay for it. Most significantly, uh, improve client communications. Developing a, a project chart, project chart or a front, having those real detailed conversations with the client, rather than just taking the delivery instruction out. I'm sure that many of you have, have had clients that have come to you for a project and say, This is the project and I want you to deliver it. Um, and they kind of explain the project to you in, in their way of what they think the project should be or what the outcome should be. And then So 
study. And, and one of the things I find that is really cool is how to have a difficult conversation up front. So that, you know, when, we, when we're not um, investigating or doing research on a, a legal issue, um, and the costs are starting to look a little bit, um, a little bit like might be an out of control a little bit, it's be able to talk to the, the client and say, these are the issues that we've had in the case at the moment, and we talk that cost right early on. Um, and then to define the scope, um, and go away and, and we look at things that people can have to. So, we're really trying to encourage those difficult conversations which don't typically happen with the clients who don't like to talk to the clients who don't like to talk to the costs. Um, and we should be able to, it's just part of doing business to each other. Um, and also a, um, a, a business model that's, that's linked um, with the way that an organization delivers its uh, business as well. So if you're a project based organization and we're a project based law firm, then there are synergies between the two, we're all talking the same language. Um, and this is particularly so for a lot of organizations that have in house counsel. So uh, I'm not sure if the party would have power or I know Humphrey's in council has an in house lawyer. Um, if, they're, if they're practicing a legal project management and um, we as a legal provider are uh, uh, um, using legal project management, then we have a, a common system and a, a common way of doing it. There's heaps of benefits to be achieved from there. Um, and I think, particularly for the in house lawyers, legal project management has the added advantage because you're, you're trying to deal with um, a whole range of internal clients that have come to you with technical issues or legal problems um, and you need to distill what are those issues that really need to be dealt with um, who the best person is to deal with them who I need to outsource this is it something that needs to be packaged right away and who needs to be communicated with and so on you have to do all this, this whole assessment before it actually gets outsourced to, to, to us um, so I think that there's huge advantages for the in-house guys so if you've got in-house models so overseas, it really has taken off. Heaps of benefits, not just in cost control, and uh, but also as a result of this situation. Despite all those uh, those benefits, more firms in New Zealand um, have not been so quick to to adopt legal project management, as I said. There isn't much happening out there, um, and I think there's probably two reasons for that. But the first is that, thankfully, the, the financial crisis has had the same impact in New Zealand as it has overseas. Um, as I said, that we, uh, we've experienced considerable growth. We've seen clients who have been on the um, increasing pressure to, to control their costs, more so than they would pay normally. They are trying to limit their, their legal expenditure. Um, quite a few are, are waiting until the last minute before engaging a, a lawyer. Um, so it's probably not the best thing to do because the, the cost will probably um, work out a lot more expensive than uh, engaging to the, the, the earliest opportunity. Um, but they're not driving, they're not putting more things under the same pressure to change the way that they do business as the more as their clients are seeking to do to similar more things. Um, so we haven't been forced the clients to improve the efficiency in the way that we do, that we do business. The other reason is probably because more firms are typically very conservative um, and they're very traditional um, in the way that they undertake law. Um, very slow to adopt new practices. Um, it's for those that have been used in other industries that have been very positive. Law firms are a little real of doing business. Uh, so <coughs> that is a, a very good reason for us to change. Um, I think that uh, most are just waiting for the back there to take the back first step and uh, to test the water, see what this is all about, and then we'll all be drinking and uh, it's uh, reaping the benefits. So. Uh, the challenge is that issue around being traditional, conservative, um, presents a, a number of, of, of challenges for us as project manager lawyers being able to 
trained to study the law in the country. Um, the role as a, as a lawyer has many, uh, many things in common as a in the project manager. We share many similar traits. This trusted advisor role that we can carry, and um, those the leadership skills, persuasion, strategic thinking, um, risk, risk management, and um, managing your human resources. Um, our friends are for we deal with as lawyers as well, the same as a lawyer, as, 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 as a normal project manager to do as well. And, um, well, there's kind of a number of things that we have been thrown up as to why project management won't work in a living environment. Um, the first is the problem that when we go to law school, we're not taught how to, to manage. Um, much of the focus of law school is around the technical detail of, of the law. So you learn how to become a great lawyer. And a great lawyer needs to know all of the legal issues, all of the case law needs to be a real subject matter expert. Um, they don't need to um, have a, um, a knowledge of management costs, control of expectations, um, risks. None of the legal practice, that part of the legal practice is taught at the bottom of law school. It's very narrowly focused on legal issues. Um, the other issue is that um, the practice of law is no role with your relationship with the client is to advance your, your client's position. Um, a lot of that revolves around uh, undertaking research. You need to know that heaps of stones to advance every argument you can to advance your client's position. Um, explore every avenue that's, that's available. The focus is on, is on quality of the, the deliverable at the end. Um, rather than efficiency. Um, and for many, there's no, no such place as fit purpose or, or good enough. It's got to be the best of the thing for part of the client. And that's what we do is for you to buy high quality legal advice. Um, another issue is that the um, law is unique. Um, of course it is. Everything we do is unique. Every legal matter that we get faced with is unique. Um, never been delivered before, so a unique factual situation involving different people, different circumstances. Um, many of you, many, many of you have um, their own genders. Uh, yep, yeah, a lot of it is, is adversarial, you don't know how the other parties are, are going to react. Um, but a lot of it is, is processed, it really is a, a process driven uh, profession. Um, and a lot of it can be really easily mapped out. Um, so the, those, those arguments don't really hold to water for the complex matters which can be based on the roadway planning or, or whatever. There are project management methodologies that we can use to still manage and control the legal matters, no matter how unique uh, and no matter how um, adversarial the clients um, or the different parties are. Um, we've always practiced this way, things have improved. Don't fix it. Um, boys have been practicing this, this way for years and years and years, so they must be doing something right. Um, yeah, correct. Um, and I think you know, that there's some, there's some merit in that statement that um, lawyers are an accidental project manager, they are managing work, uh, they're managing the levels. You can have um, uh, the court that sets a framework within which you need to operate and, and set few milestones, and that there are huge consequences if you don't actually achieve the and so you need to be able to deliver something of quality on time within the time frame set by another party. Um, but if you don't plan, you obviously you never know how successful you've been. Uh, Everything is lost in uh, stress, stress, pressure. Um, and again, the, the billable hour, the way that we choose to do it, the work doesn't require you to be efficient. Uh, unfortunately, um, it doesn't need you to plan. The more time you spend, the more money the third makes, the bottom time is a bit not. Um, but it doesn't drive you to be as efficient as you can to turn things around with the business quickly as you can. Um, and I think really the project manager can really come into its own way. Um, the other problem which I am now facing is this role as a, as a lawyer or as a project manager. And being able to differentiate between the two because that's you're the subject matter expert, or you're the project manager, and being able to step outside of the team and 
I was always under the uh, the belief that um, um, engineers and, and architects don't want to work for the managers um, just because of the that issue around you get too involved in the, in the, in the technical detail and you can't stand back and be a big project manager. So in my, in my previous life, I would always start off a, a, a quick up meeting by saying, along the lines of I'm being really competent here, so don't bother talking to me about legal stuff, I'm managing the project, and this is how it's going to be, so I do this type of thing. Um, but I'm now in a position where you know, I'm having to work between the two, and I find that a challenge. Even with my project management background and skills and experience, I still find it a challenge to draw myself out of the legal issues, out of the technical detail, and then to try and manage the, the, the project. Um, it's, it really is, is difficult, and that's probably one of the biggest challenges for us, who is going to train our lawyers in house, is to, to help them to understand the difference between when you're, you're managing a project and when you're approaching the things that you're looking for. So, so one well, Michael the in New Zealand, uh, we recognise benefits and not the of the project management. Uh, and I'm in the process of developing a project management framework and some training for our lawyers in house. I've already started off by um, delivering a couple of seminars in house just to use the subject and uh, some of the terminology. Um, and when I walk around now, we'll we start to talk in the present management language, and you can see the occasional depth chart uh, up on the wall. Um, as part of that, um, I became involved in the, the project management, and um, as you can see, the project management community in practice, where I was managing a program through the social media network that has developed um, legal project management tools and templates for a organizational process asset process library, um, which, was, which was a really interesting process. I, I got to engage with, with quite a number of super black experts overseas in, in the US and Canada, people who are actually um, falling into, into the project planning, and some of those were authors of the textbooks that they um, had also read as well. Um, so the objective was to develop this, this resource for all legal project managers could use to provide the tools and templates that are considered to be best practice to, to the PMI. Um, and it was a, a process that we um, first of all with engaging with the, the legal community, so the uh, PMIs, uh, community members, through the description forms on the website, um, and other social networking websites, the um, LinkedIn. Um, firstly, to identify what the legal project management tools were, <coughs> what we thought were the, were the top 10 uh, legal project management tools that we needed to, to manage the legal project, um, and then to seek examples of, of those templates, people that were using the tools, people that were using them out there in the, in the legal community. Um, we then go through a process of collaboration, review with the subject matter experts for the Provided Project Management Institute. We modify them and then into what we thought was considered the best practice, and then we make them available for all to, to use. There was significant interest at the beginning of the program. Um, a lot of people as part of the community were saying how great the research was going to be, um, how much they wanted to be involved in it, and um, we are looking forward to using the tools in the future. Um, and we got quite a number of contributions as to what the, the tools should be. Um, and um, what, what we consider, what the community considers to be the most important legal project management tools were, were those that were listed up there. Um, and there's no terrible surprise, I don't suppose, that the community's project managers would not think there's anything else that we've brought there on the list that we think is necessary, but I think that's probably ticked all the boxes that I was expecting to come back with. What about the efforts then? Because that's the key thing, you're making your clients. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, work breakdown structures with turn up. I don't know how you can develop a template for work breakdown structures, the business model process, then 
this is out there to uh, to our uh, engineers and architects who I love and um, tell them that the build and they they don't really the court they don't have to report to the court. We we have a duty and obligation to report to the court. We report the court our obligation is to is to the court. So um, it's a service issue if you miss deadlines. Um, I don't know, managing managing those things. Things get stressed.
several of them would become confident with project managers as well as lawyers. Yeah. And they were at an edge on, let's say, you. I mean, they're they're not great. Great. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that is, I would say, if you have those those two skills, yeah. you are a, a confident lawyer and you're a confident project manager. You're in the streets ahead of the majority of the way. It certainly is, I would say, it's a huge advantage. Yeah, I, that's, I, I was just interested in that kind of like that issue because I was always a bit of a big thing and it was crazy kind of good. Um, when I was asked to advise on, on how to how to structure projects, I had a client who would say, I'll get my architect to do it to the project manager. So I'm not the only kind of project manager. The last thing that I did was the architect control the cost of the It's like very engineering and project management precisely the thing. In the presentation, it's an uh, interesting development in the profession because property management has been around since the pyramids were built, but it's commonly accepted it was codified after the war for the Polaris submarine project, moved into construction, moved into business, into the corporate world, finance. Good to see it knocking on the doors of the last bastion of, uh, <laughs> of conservatism in the legal profession. But uh, you've opened up some interesting concepts. And I, Appreciate what you've done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I was going to suggest that if you had any legal issues that you wanted to uh, take advantage of legal advice, but my colleagues are going to run it. Well, maybe next time. There's something that um, if, if you want to consider it as a um, as part of the uh, presentation, I would be in the series kind of particular legal issues that you could be found. That's why I thought the commission guys would come along and um have commercial issues that you could come across. But if you, you know, have some kind of legal issues that you could have to work well and approach the context, then we're quite happy to put together a presentation for us and we can do anything as well. So it's a good deal. So thank you. Thank you.